Hello, fellow mech warriors, Mage Leader here. Welcome back to the Battle Mech Primer, the series where my opinions are about as terrible as my German accent. You know, this is an interesting one today. A lot of people voted in the poll, and the results caught me a little bit off guard. You guys voted on another classic Star League era machine, passing over three others that are arguably far superior. But I guess that looks are indeed an important deciding factor when it comes to this sort of thing. I'll cover it, but fair warning, some of you might not like what I have to say. So without any further interruption, let's start talking about the Cyclops. The Cyclops was first introduced in 2710. Like most other battle mechs of the time, it was a machine designed for the immediate purpose of obtaining a contract from the Star League Defense Force. In those days, battle mechs were in high demand. But as House Armies downsized, the SLDF quickly became the only true military power in the Inner Sphere, and a financial agreement with the Star League's Bureau of Military Procurement was the single most lucrative trade deal in the history of trade deals. The military budget for the burgeoning New Empire was ludicrously vast, and in this environment, a battle mech needed to stand out from the crowd to have the best shot at securing a slice of the pie. The Cyclops aimed to do that by providing an often overlooked, but incredibly vital service. The Cyclops is what's known as a command mech, a term that gets floated around nowadays to the point where it's lost virtually all meaning. In its broadest sense, a command mech is simply the mech being used by the commander of a military force, therefore any battle mech can be a command mech. Some are better suited to the task than others, and the needs of a commander can vary from mission to mission. But back in the early 28th century, the term had a slightly different meaning. A command mech was a machine that was purpose-built for the task of military command. Leading a military operation is a sensitive and delicate affair, one that most often requires vast amounts of information. In the early days of humanity, the commander's influence over a battle was limited. A lack of instant communication technology meant that orders were delivered via courier, an approach that, while necessary, was woefully deficient. Armies were large and unwieldy, and once a battle began, it was often nearly impossible to adapt to the changing landscape. Many approaches were tried throughout human history to improve communication, from homing pigeons to smoke signals and even music. And while some of these approaches did improve the commander's ability to send and receive information, their influence was still limited once a battle actually began. Another issue was providing the commander with a picture of the battle itself, allowing him to see how things were developing so that he could respond accordingly. Knowing where your soldiers were and where your enemy was moving was crucial, and it was this need that necessitated the ranks, files, and formations of ancient Terran warfare. If you've ever wondered why men in bright uniforms used to march in big lines, stand still, and shoot at one another out in the open, this is why. The Information Age would forever alter the shape of warfare, even the very concept of what an army was. The advent of radio communication meant that units could be spoken to directly, which led to a far more rapid style of combat as orders came through at lightning speed. However, the issues a commander faced became more pronounced as the neat formations and flags disappeared in favor of camouflage and small, loose, and versatile formations. While telling your soldiers what to do became easier, knowing what to tell them became more challenging. In time, developments such as GPS and satellite imaging would provide better intelligence, and by the 28th century there were literally hundreds of different technologies that allowed a commander access to indispensable information. This, however, presented a new problem, one that the Cyclops was designed to solve. Having information is great, but it doesn't do a lick of good if you can't understand it. In earlier days, a commander would be bombarded with intel from dozens of sources at once, and it was his job to assemble those scraps of data into a cohesive view of the big picture, a task that was immensely difficult to achieve, particularly when he was being shot at. Fortunately, the Cyclops came standard with a Tacticon B2000, an incredibly powerful battle computer. This device was the true strength of the machine, as it received data from the myriad of sensors, data link feeds, and communications equipment, and processed it all instantaneously providing its driver with a detailed yet easily understandable picture of the battle space that was constantly updated as the situation changed. The computer was a true breakthrough in technology, and the edge it gave to commanders in field tests was unlike anything else being offered at the time. 
While it wasn't the first battle computer, it was by far the most advanced, and the SLDF soon rolled out the Cyclops across its armed forces. However, the success of the mech would be short-lived. The First Succession War would see Stormbanger Assembly's factories destroyed, and the B-2000 computer would become either lost or useless as the war dragged on. Broken units could no longer be replaced, and neither could the instruments that interfaced with it. In time, it became what is known as Lost Tech, and this would prove to be the death knell for the design. The Cyclops is not a combat-oriented battle mech, despite its armaments. In its default configuration, it carries an LRM-10, an SRM-4, and an AC-20, as well as two medium lasers. While that seems respectable, what it doesn't carry is sufficient ammo to keep those weapons running. The Cyclops is also under-armored for its weight, making it one of the worst choices for an assault mech. Without its true purpose, the Cyclops became a second-rate mech, one that you gave to the guy in your unit that you didn't like. What the hell is this? While its distinctive cockpit gave increased visibility to SLDF commanders, for your average merc or house stooge, it was a liability, presenting a massive target for the enemy. To this day, the Cyclops remains something of a dead design. Attempts have been made to modernize it, but more often than not, it comes up short in one department or another. While we now have the ability to reproduce the B-2000, combat doctrine has once again changed. The C-3 computer system has left the B-2000 as an antiquated relic of a bygone era, putting further nails in the Cyclops' coffin. It's slow, undergunned, poorly protected, and lacking in staying power. Like your mom in a town without any strip clubs, it is without purpose, and it is forever doomed to remain that way. The Cyclops is not a good mech. You could argue that it never really was. The machine itself was never meant to be special, but rather an armored shell for its true innovation, its computer. Now that the world has moved on, the Cyclops appears less and less, and one day it may very well disappear entirely. So that's the Cyclops. There really isn't much to say about it. It's a mediocre machine on a good day, a battle mech that has lost its way in the world. It was once a powerhouse of information, a shining example of what technology could achieve on the battlefield, but now it's nothing more than a stopgap, a battle mech that you only use when you have no other options. While it can dish out a pounding, there are far better options in its price range, and most everyone with a functioning brainstem chooses to leave it in the dustbin of history. It's a sad story, but one that nonetheless needs telling. While we can all appreciate what it achieved, if you ask me to pilot one, my answer is simple. You first. Thank you all so much for watching, and special thanks to my $5 patrons. Rostran Targo, Zero, Sean Hare, Delphino, Miguel Batacan, Alexander Hymerl, Chef Soon, Delta 505, Military Sticks, Spacer, Arcos Raid, Kyle Vidari, Tim Cook, Tomoyaga Tudor, Gary Moses Sweeney, and Admiral Chirino. If you would like to offer your own support, there is a link down in the description. Thank you once again, and until next time, this is Mage Leader, signing off.